started working when I started working in the uh, in Hong Kong in a day spa at that time, we were actually in the middle of the um, financial crisis. There was the Asian financial crisis. And when I moved to New York, that was just after the 9-11. So every time I entered a new uh, business, it was already at the bottom of the curve, which I think we are now. So there's many tricks and many tips that we can use as we try and ride the, uh, the demand wave of things start to improve with time. Hopefully, everybody's uh, countries will be looking at you know, some, some ways that we can still drive revenue in this very challenging period. Okay, so maybe what I'd like to do, I'd like to share a little bit with you. Um, I'm from the School of Hospitality in Singapore. So after the hotels, I've moved into Singapore and I teach at the Polytechnic now. And in the Polytechnic, we actually talk about revenue management. And revenue management is something that is very popular and then that's, that's a way that, you know, I'm sure some of you already have experienced it yourself as well. Uber pricing, hotel bookings, airline pricings, and so forth. And I do have some slides that um, I would like to move on and share with you a little bit more from. Okay, so without much ado, let's talk about what is revenue management. So what comes to mind when you think of revenue management? I know it's a big word for some of you. Any thoughts there in the chat? Feel free to add words as you come along. Okay, it may sound like a big word, but what does it mean? I think some of you already have experienced it in terms of seasonal, seasonal pricing, where there are more customers, you charge more, and during quiet times, you give a discount. But some of you have experienced this when you book your airlines, hotel, Uber, or when you experience revenue management in action. So what industries would be most suitable for revenue management? So this would be our industry, especially um, we talk about perishable products or fixed inventory, which means to say that hotels have rooms, right? But if you don't sell the rooms today, tomorrow, you cannot sell yesterday's rooms. Same thing for us when we do bookings, you know, when we have bookings in our hotel, in our spas, we're selling, what are we selling? Are we selling services? No, we are selling time. So time is the unit that we actually sell. And therefore it's very important when we sell time, we try and sell the time at the most highest value possible for the time that we have, especially the time of our therapist and the time of the available room as well. Okay, and finally, in order for revenue uh, management to work, it has to become a customer centric. So we need to really focus on what the customer needs and customer wants. Okay, so it's maybe just to show you some of the uh, official definition of revenue management, but it looks like a big mouthful. So I'm gonna summarize it. Those of you who want my slides, please let me know. I'd be more than happy to share. But in summary, what is revenue management? It's just simply selling the right products at the right price, at the right place, at the right time to the right customer. And the most important thing is at the maximum price they're willing to pay for at that time. Okay, sounds easy. Well, it is if you're able to have seven key steps. So at the School of Hospitality, I would like to share with you some of the seven key steps that we use when we are trying to think about how do we create this environment so that we're able to charge this high price. You know, as a massage is a massage, how do we charge $50 massage and suddenly make it 75 or make it $30, right? So as we start going down the different steps, I'll explain to you how we're able to achieve that. And for me, when I was working in Hong Kong in a day spa, we were able to achieve that. The spa was about 14 rooms and we're able to achieve from 40% occupancy all the way up to 80% occupancy, not to mention five times, um, five times, which means 500% the revenue that we got when we first started. By looking at individual small, small over time, over time, it will be over a two year period, you know, where we're able to use incremental changes in the ways that we approach um, booking time in order to be able to sell it at the highest price possible. Okay, so the first step that we need to know is who are your customers? Okay, that's a very important thing. And your location itself will also help determine who your customer is going to be, right? Who are your spa guests? What do they want? Are they here for specific treatments? Or they just want some me time? What is the preferred time that they're able to come and how often are they able to come? So to be able to know your customer segment, you then will be able to best address their needs. And this will determine the success of your business. So if you're not sure about your customers and they're coming in and moving out, you know, and they're coming through, but you don't really have some record as what their needs are, what their interests, what their likes are. My suggestion is do a quick survey, find out why 
because then you do step two, in which you start to segment them. Hold on, sorry. Oh, Suzanne. Oh, okay. Suzanne. Yeah, can you go back a slide? Yes, perfect. Okay, all right. Okay, so step two is market segmentation. So what is market segmentation? Market segmentation is just grouping them. Okay, we group them into what? We group them into those who give us the highest profit, those who are the most loyal, those who are able to fill your quiet hours. And which group is most likely to be the most growing segment for your business moving forward? For example, if a new hit and cool place is opening just next door to you, it could be a potential new market segment that you can tap onto as well. All right, so by knowing which is your right market segment, you're able to access the opportunities and to work with different marketing partners to be able to target specifically at this marketing segment so that you're able to drive, to change your, even your products sometimes, your treatments, to be able to best meet this market segments we have. So depending on what you have, you know, like for us in, your, in Hong Kong, we were targeting essentially in central area. So we had a lot of busy executives. So during the... Uh, five to eight o'clock slots, we are full, 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 impossible to book. However, the rest of the time, we were quite quiet, right? So over time, we started to see, okay, then how much our market segments can we address? Since we really got a captive market of, of busy executives, how are we able to fill our time with the next group? We look at Thai Thais. In Singapore, uh, Hong Kong, Thai Thais simply means rich socialite, who happens to live very close to where we, where we have our spa as well. So we're able to target them address them and then trying to bring them in during the quieter hours because they were able, they were not working. So they were able to come in at the quieter hours too. Okay, next step. What do you need to do next? You do need to also understand your company's strength, weakness, opportunity and threats. So what is this? It means what does your company stand for? Who are you? Are you just a any spa? Or are you a spa with some very unique um, programs? For us, we had a spa that's very cosmopolitan. I think we were the only spa in Hong Kong at that time that was bilingual. We spoke fluent English, fluent Cantonese, and then we appealed to a very niche group of very cosmopolitan, high-end clientele, you know, in terms of the way we were able to address their needs. And of course, from there, we were able to um, de um, design treatments and programs and also look at ways where we were able to maximize the spend that they spend with us. Of course, apart from doing it by yourself, you need to know about your competitors too. Who's next to you? Who's opening next to you? All right. Where will your, where will your clients go to or where your customers will go to when you're full, when you're fully booked? You know, where would they go to next? Or by knowing that is very important so that you're better able to tailor your business in such a way that you're able to attract them and to keep them. All right. Beyond that, you also look at your where are secondary competitors. Why would they go? Where would they go to for celebrations? Can I also bring them to my spa as well? Okay, so by knowing all this will give you a better idea how, it, how you're able to understand your consumers much, much better. And then this will lead you to the next step, which is demand focusing. Okay, what is demand focusing? It's very important, especially now, you know, we have just in case uh, inventory, okay, is no longer just in time, which used to be the keyword just in case, because you never know when the supply is going to come next. You're not sure when the towel is going to come next. You're not sure when the products from or the enzyme peel is coming next. Like in Singapore at the moment, enzyme peels is very hard to find. Okay, so just in case um, ordering is very important too. So you understand your business patterns. By understanding your business patterns, your stocks, your towels, your therapists, understanding your demand is very critical in order to be able to create space in order for you to be able to generate a maximum from your revenue management by allowing for more therapists, especially on-call therapists, to be part of your be part of your group as well. So you're able to then um, drive certain demand at certain times. And if one of your staff is out, you always have people to come in to be able to be back up. So I always tell my therapists that if there's no customers coming today or you run out products, it's not your fault, it's entirely mine because I didn't do any planning. So demand forecasting, planning, is very critical. You cannot just wait for today and say, hey, I hope, I hope someone's going to come through the door. It's not going to happen. You have to plan. You have to make it happen. Okay, the next one would be channel analysis and marketing. So if you have done step one and step two, right, and I think some of you remember step one and step two, right, which is your customer. 
if you understand your customer and your market segment very well, then you're not going to spend and waste money on hitting everyone in your marketing. You'll be able to be more focused, more targeted, be using Facebook, Instagram, or the various different uh, social media or different media that you have in your neighborhood. So you're very, very targeted in the way that you're able to achieve them. For example, HubSpot blog did a survey to say that, you know, at least people are looking to five, three, four, you know, different platforms in order for them to maximize the marketing. And like for us, for example, content marketing is excellent because content marketing also creates a positioning for your company as well. And to let people know who you are. I will, of course, share a little bit more about ClassPass, which I think is very interesting that some of you, if you have that, can consider. Okay, next, I think I'm going to spend a little bit more time in this area where we're going to talk a little bit about dynamic value-based pricing. Because when you talk about revenue management, the first thing everybody thinks about would be dynamic pricing. So what exactly is this when you talk about revenue management? It's just simply saying, instead of charging your spa treatment, be it one facial or massage at one price, right? If you do that, you get only this amount of revenue. Instead, what you do is you charge it at one price, but you'll be able to bundle it in such a way that you can, during certain peak periods, charge it at much higher prices so that you're able to achieve also this extra revenue from here and also lower at this extra revenue from here when the demand is um, less, but your prices is cheaper. Okay, so this is definitely one way to do so. All right, so this is not a tactic. This is a strategy where the company looks at a way where they're able to drive revenue as a strategy. So what do I mean by driving revenue as a strategy? So you do need to, of course, look at overall um, environment around you. you know, what is your demand or customers? You do need to do a plan, you need to study it, all right? You need to look at what is your tentative bookings and which hours and which days are you always full, all right? What is your current market condition? Is next month, you know, it's going to, like for us in Hong Kong, there'll be Navy week. Well, the Navy boys come for well, sure that, that week will be full, right? Or Christmas periods, for example, it's going to be really crazy full for us. But during summer holidays and summer vacation, the spa is opening at maybe half capacity because everybody's gone off for the summer holidays. So depending on what um, your understanding and you really need to understand your business, then you're able to plan properly and able to do proper forecasting and pricing at the right time. Okay, as I was mentioning to you, what is strategic pricing? Strategic pricing essentially is positioning your price at where your value of your business is at. For example, when I opened up Mandarin Oriental in, in New York, I was the opening spa director then. So I was the one responsible for setting the price for the spa treatment. At that time in New York City, the average price was $100 US per hour for treatments for massage. But when we came in, we said you know, to our bosses, we want to charge it at 180. He said, 180? Nobody's going to come for $180 plus plus, which means plus service plus tax. It comes up to $260 US dollars. But we said that, you know, it's very important because we need to be able to position clearly that we are not going to be at the regular price point and not at a regular hotel price point, but for Mandarin Oriental, we have, we have the whole shebang. We have food, we have the whole spa suite, we have the whole services coming in for treatments an hour, an hour before treatments where you actually have the use of full facilities. Then the premium price, 180 plus plus, is definitely worth paying for. Plus, at the same time, this also the positioning of the hotel as well, okay? So, whereas in Hong Kong, we're able to price it probably because at that time when I, meant, when I mentioned to you, we took over um, at, in the middle of the Asian crisis. So nobody is gonna pay premium pricing at that time. So we did was we did bundle pricing. So we focus on hours. So, okay, for one hour, I will charge it cheaper, but I want you to stay longer. So instead of coming one client coming for one hour of treatment, why don't you come in for two hours of treatment instead? A price is slightly lower, but I want you to stay longer. In this way, so instead of getting two customers to come in for that time, you're able to get one client at spending longer in the location itself. All right. So there's are many ways in which you can look at um, pricing in order to be able to drive higher revenue for your business. Okay. For example, there are three types of tactical pricing. One price. One thing that I do not want to do is discounts, discounts, and discounts. Because discounts really give the business a bad name. 
because it will start to lower your image if it's just purely focusing on discount. Instead, you add value. So value can be added using bundling. Okay, you can do facial massage, you can do with products. I think some of you are very concerned about product sales, right? Bundle the products in so that it keeps create value for your, for your company, for your business as well. For example, someone who's coming in with skin issues, bundle a product in, sample products, let them try. So bundle, sample products, let them try. And after they try, majority of the times, if they like it, they will buy it. All right, so create that relationship, let them try, bundle the products. You know, be innovative in the way that you approach things. And also, you don't have to sell your services at a discounted price to everyone. You can price fence it. So there are certain times in your day where you do need, unfortunately, to sell at a lower price. Don't call it discount. Call it early bird. You come in for early bird, come in for lunch special, come in for different times so that you're able to price fence. So only this time you're able to come in. What we used to do is that after price fencing, we also try to make sure that we discontinue it over time. Okay, so for example, we may find that in the typical day, you know, oh, it's being being inside this the business district, our peak period will be five to eight o'clock. So five to eight o'clock, for example, full price. The massage, the services, everything we have, full price. However, um, we started launching, but the rest of the time it's pretty empty, right? The rest of the day, it depends especially those of you who have got two shifts, right? So you got a morning shift and you got an afternoon shift coming in and they all come in between two to five and that's when you're full. But that's also the time where you don't have a lot of guests. So you end up carrying a lot of salary without a lot of guests. So what do you do? So this is a time where you can start looking at promotions, okay? Promotions, getting sampler, new customers to come in for the first time. And you use new promotions to try and drive traffic to these hours, all these hours. Okay, so that you're able to create a loyal group of people who after coming to the same time again and again, create a habit. And of course, you continue early birds with them. No, you drop. You reduce the days that you are full with early birds. But what you can do, you can capture their hearts by ensuring that you maybe offer them at a special early bird prices ahead. They may be able to buy 12 packages from you way in advance or 24 packages to last them for maybe a year at these early bird prices for anyone new coming in full price, right? So as you start to find that your morning slots become peak, then they don't do early birds anymore. Early birds is retained for those loyal to you and have been with you for some time, you convert them by offering them a special package value price, which they can continue staying with you. And then of course, these ones who are very loyal, then offer them, continue to offer them at a special early bird prices as they continue to stay with you moving forward. But anyone new coming in at that time, full price. Okay, so this is how you're able to look at differentiated pricing in order to be able to achieve the maximum revenue possible. And then over time, start to drop. Okay, as you find that, oh, this hours, they are used to coming during lunchtime to do a quick facial, no more discount. <laughs> or if they're coming early and they always come in on Mondays and they're getting busier and busier, okay, and you're getting full, no more discounts as well. So you're able to start dropping these hours so that you instead of only peak period here, you start getting more peaks around the rest of the day. And that's how you're able to maximize your profit and how you're able to generate sales up. At the same time, you may, for example, for promotions, you know, to start selling sampler because people want to try the products, right? But they're not willing to buy the whole set or the whole $200, $400 um, packages of facial cleanse, toner, and so forth. So what you can do is during this promotion, do bundling. Let them try the products. Let them try the items. And after trying, then fill them up. So what we do is we do promotions during certain hours and then we shift, we shift them so that ultimately more and more and more and more this whole thing should be as peak as possible. And then you're able to retain your 80 to 90% utilization of rooms and maybe about 70% to 80% utilization of therapists, depending on how you schedule them moving forward. Okay, I hope that's helpful so far. Some tips and tricks that we had used. Okay. And finally, of course, last but not least, it will be channel and inventory management. Okay, of course, what we all hate is those last minute cancellations, right? You have two hours booked for them. That two hours, if they're done properly, would have been $200 for you. Unfortunately, last minute cancellations, what can you do? So this could be two things you can do. One is always have that hit list of people who you know you can definitely call at any time and say, hey, I got this slot for you. Come in, come in, come in, book, come in for treatments now. 
or you can look at a, a system like this, the last minute uh, booking system. We can look at class booker, okay, where they get class pass, where you're able to book through them. And they were able to also show um, how the revenue and so forth um, inside their system as well. Personally, I will not hand over my entire booking over to another system. I will hand over my booking only for last minute to them. So they're able to fill in my last minute bookings and cancellations quickly. But I would not handle my whole day booking to them. Why? Because controlling of that schedule book is really, really important. If you control your schedule well, then you reduce the number of empty slots and empty times, especially those half hour times. So those half hour times are really revenue killers. If you're able to manage that well, then you should be able to see a very, very high occupancy for your overall business. Okay, so that's it. That's my, my little sharing. So very important, selling the right product, right price, the right place, and the right time to the right, to the right customer. Okay, so I'm gonna take some, uh, I'm gonna take some questions now. Um, and let's have a quick look at the questions. Let me just stop share first. Okay, so thank okay. you so much, Suzanne. I think if anybody's got any questions, please can you either unmute or put them in the chat box, would be great. And I'll get one question going that I think could be on everybody's mind. If you do this dynamic pricing that you that you showed, what price list would you advertise? on your websites so would you advertise the highest price as a standard because otherwise people will complain if they see oh this is for early bird and this is for correct so the prices that i would always advertise would be my rack price a rack price essentially would be the highest price possible okay the highest price possible based on the competition around me the services i offer my positioning in the market so for example in, in Hong Kong, if the price was about 100 US dollars for treatments for my average price for my neighbors, then I'll be pricing it at 130 or 140. So I'll be 30 to 40 percent higher than everybody else in general. Okay, depend because of the uh, of the cosmopolitan vibe, the positioning that we have for our business. Okay. Then with regular customers and those customers that is very good and long term with us, then I'll be then I have 40 percent so to speak to work with to be able to offer differentiated pricing, okay? And yet still maintain at a higher price than my neighbor at the same time. So although they may look at 40% and go, wow, this is very high, but I would use sampler pricing. Sampler pricing means they come in the sample because I do find that anytime somebody comes to the spa for the first time, this is your best opportunity to get them. And what I do is I always work, like for example, I, know I don't have receptionists in my spa. I only have consultants. So. We have 16 rooms, I have five consultants, and I've got 20 staff, 20 therapists. Okay, for five consultants, each one of them take um, one customer. So every single customer that calls up, that consultant is responsible for them all the way through for the whole journey. The journey can be one treatment, the journey can be 10 treatments, the journey can be a lifetime with us at the spa. So the consultant becomes very, very firm friends with them. And they were the ones who then speak to the, the customers at the end of the day and say, hey, what are your needs? What do we need to do? And then offer them at a consultation a very good price, which they can consider. We may also do special promotions with targeted groups. For example, we may offer the early bird promotion only to a select groups. For example, we go to the ladies club, we go to the Danish ladies club, the Danish expat club, for example, and say, hey ladies, we know that you, know, you would like to try, we'd like to invite you, we're offering you a special package. So we price fence it, which means we don't offer it to everyone. We offer it to select groups. We can go to the American club too. We can go to the various clubs and say, hey, come to us. We like to do a special promotion. You come for the early bird because we know the ladies are available to come for the morning session. Okay, does it answer your question so far? But, but the key, honestly, to really driving the business is really the consultants because each one of them individually is responsible for them. And that's where we drive the KPI after that, which can, I can talk about in terms of product sales later. So Is can I else? clarify something? Your, your, you, your therapists only do mm -hmm. the treatments. The consultants 
do the consultation, the, the journey, the checkout, everything else. The therapists only do treatments. The therapists do treatments and also product sales. Okay. So they're very responsible for product sales and they partner up with the consultants, which means we may buddy them up. So for this few months, they are buddied and they will share commissions for that period, especially for new clients. So we look at incentive scheme, the whole KPI or key performance indicators as to what I'm looking to do. For example, it's very hard for the consultants to just sell without the help of the therapist. The therapist could recommend something, but the consultants have no clue what's going on out there, like what's going on inside the room. So the collaboration between the consultants and the therapist is key. It's very, very key, especially for return business and repeat business. And matching is very important. If, for example, the consultants no clue, just book in anyone, anytime, because the space is available, most likely you're not going to get a repeat client because the customers may not be interested to come. Um, the massage is too hard. They don't like the style. They don't like the way it's presented. But the consultants meeting with the customers and actually spending time with them for even a half hour, they have a very good sensing as to which, which therapist will best match this customer in terms of the way they approach things, how firm they like to have the treatment, and what specialized treatments they like to offer. So we focus on matching the customers and therapists very much. So when it's well matched, a lot of time to repeat customers is very, very high. And also the retail sales is very high because when they're well matched, then the therapist is able to talk to the, um, the clients in a way that they, they feel confident and they trust that they're able to recommend products that they most likely will improve on your skin condition. And because the customer and the therapist keep track of the performance of the skin condition or the massage or whatever it is that they are here to do, you know, the, the, the customer feels respected and feel honored that, hey, you know, you actually know me and you're actually trying to recommend, not just come in for treatment and then you're out, that's it. Goodbye, I'll see you next week. That's it, full stop, that's the end of the relationship. So the relationship we try to create is a very intimate relationship. I think the hotels do that too, especially with regards to data information on the customer so that I think in Mandarin Oriental, what we do is that we know every client that comes in, we always address them by their name. From the doorman to the concierge to the GM, we will, they will be able to recognize the client and, and the, the hotel guests and recognize by name because all of us have seen who is coming in for the day. So roughly we'll know what is their needs, what their interests and so forth, and we're able to address that. And that's how we're able to offer exemplary service. And not exemplary service in any five star, any service that you do, this is the way to retain customers. That's amazing. And then do you advertise the sampler pricing? Do, do you advertise that? Do you say, come for a treatment for the first time? Or do you only when you get a call for the first time, do you say, okay, we have a sampler um, price for you? How do you handle okay. that? So essentially what we do is we have the right price that's at this bar and also at our website, this stuff. Okay, then we also have promotions where we do, for example, we do deals with the, uh, the, yes. the Sunday papers. Because okay. the Sunday papers in a very expensive newspaper of South China Morning Post, you know, it's normally typically very expensive from Monday to Fridays. However, on weekends, it's actually very cheap. So we always buy the first corner of the uh, South China Morning Post, and we always advertise our sampler promotion uh, for everyone. So, for example, we'll do our three months promotion like uh, Chinese New Year, Spring Festival, detox, because after Chinese New Year, everybody eats a lot, right? So, <laughs> detox time after Chinese New Year, right? Then, for example, getting ready for summer. So, we'll do offer slimming program. So, we'll do sampler programs like that, you know, promotions where we talk about two things. One is the promotion itself, like for example, summer, summer slimming. And then we may offer a, a little, um, a special early bird, for example. You can come at this time to this time, we'll offer you at a sample price, but only at certain times. So we'll never offer um, the discount at peak prices. At, at peak times, sorry, there's no discounts whatsoever. At peak times, we take in our regular clients and normally they'll pay full price or if they're very loyal with us, then they'll pay at a special package price. Okay, okay. And, and typically what type of... Um discount do you offer well I know you don't like the word but what is the offering on a sampler treatment do you, do you just 
it will be about 30% discount. About. So it will okay. be discounted 30% from the right price. And that's the price where they'll come in at a sampler rate. But of course, you know, my profit margin is, is pretty significant already because as we compare against um, the other, other um, competitors around us, we already price at a certain, uh, certain premium. So when we lower it, we still make a, a comfortable profit. Yes. Again, it depends on your business. We were able to do that because we were the, the price leader. So as a price leader, we're able to command the pricing and because we're a premium product. So a lot of times, we, and we we're pretty much the only one offering the exclusive at that time. But of course, as the years change, you know, we also have to react accordingly as well. And over time, we need to look at reducing the pricing, but we don't never reduce the pricing. What we do is we look at improving the menu. So we will revamp the menu, we improve the menu, and those that we feel is not getting much traction or that if it's getting much traction and it's very popular pricing, we will never increase more than 5%. If you increase more than 5% for the most popular treatment, everybody's going to complain. But if you're able to offer pop popular treatments, right, but maybe not so busy, but, but things that are, um, that are therapeutic, so therapeutics, people are more open to pay at a higher price. So if you do charge slightly higher, even 10% or 50% higher, or call it a new name and rebrand it by adding more products to it or something like that, or even a mask, additional mask or additional treatment to it, you're able to increase the price higher. So over the three years that I was working in, in Hong Kong, we started off maybe about, because it was middle of recession, we started off about maybe $50 first. And then within six months, we moved it to 80 90 and 100 and 100 was our minimum price for example that we have there and then over the years as we start introducing new treatments that we have in the new treatments will come in at 110 115 120 and we start moving up of course we have to keep the core treatments the, the ones that clients totally love at a very comfortable uh, competitive price i love it does it answer your question yeah, it sounds amazing. Does anybody else have any other questions? I'm sure you do. I've got more, but I'd like to give everybody else the opportunity. Do you want to either unmute or go into the chat box and pose a question? Come everyone, we've got Suzanne for a few more minutes. Ask away, here's your turn. Maybe I refer to some of the questions that was asked earlier with regards to um with regards to retail sales. I think yes. retail sales, um, everybody's very concerned. What, what we did for retail sales is that we worked with our therapists. Um, in order for retail sales to go up, the therapists need to try everything, okay? They need to try every single product we have. They need to be able to experience it from themselves. Same thing for the consultants that do the treatments. So that when they recommend, it's like, for example, you go to a waiter, What's a day special? Uh, I think it's good, but I'm not sure about this. You know, you may try this. But if they try it, they use it, and they become believers of the products. Wow, your retail sales will go straight up. That's one, because they have faith in the product. The second thing is that we also set um, very competitive um, incentives as well. And every time they hit a certain incentive a target, for example, where we first started was 5% retail sales. By the, by the time we finished, we were about 60% retail sales of treatment which means if the treatment is $100, then we'll start off with maybe $10 of retail sales per therapist. But over time, we moved it to almost 50% of retail sales, which means they were spending, each client that came through was spending about $50 for their retail. But of course, you need to make sure that you have sufficient items to be able to generate the retail sales, right? So retail sales that can be generated, you cannot sell the fluff items. You do have to sell the therapeutics. And you need to have sufficient mix in the retail sales itself to be able to offer seasonal products. Okay, you need to also offer products that are slimming. Slimming for sure sells very fast if they do it well, two times a month, two times uh, they use daily. You know, um, skincare products, therapeutic skincare sell very well as well. And the retail sales, the repeat business is very, very high. So they're able to continue there. Um, those are the two key things that would definitely sell very quickly. And of course, other things that you can add on for seasonal promotions, the seasonal packages, bundling the packages together with the products can also raise the sales as well. So these are ways and techniques they can use. But very importantly is your therapist 
need to try. In fact, what we do is we give the products to the therapist, a full set for them that's suitable for their skin, let them try, because that's, I feel, the only way that they can really internalize and, and, and be ambassadors for the products that they sell. That's amazing. Okay, I like that. And um, just quickly, how do you handle training with um, with your staff? So in terms of um, when you do KPIs, when you do SOPs, when you do retail training, is this also something that is planned and scheduled in on a regular basis for you? Absolutely. That's very, very critical, especially when you're trying to, um, to develop good habits within the company itself. It's very important to do regular trainings. Um, what we do is for every new therapist that come through with us, we'll actually spend three months training them because we have a portfolio of different treatments. And of the three months that we train them, the first month, because we will bond them. After three months training, we will actually bond them for a period of like, say, a year. Okay, But within the first month, they can choose to decide no, not to work with us anymore and decide that, hey, you know what? I don't like this place. I don't want to work with you guys anymore. And they go. No issue. No bond required. But if they decide to stay for the full three months training, which will train them from skincare to body care, to massage techniques and everything else, then they'll be bonded for a year to work with us. So during that period of time, we tend to get very committed people because after one month, we decide, hey, hey, that's it. That's not for me. Then it's most likely um, it's, it's going to be difficult for us to, um, to continue working with them. But those who are willing to stay, we find that it's much easier for us to collaborate with them, to create um, a place where the, the, the customers is, is it's pretty much king during that place. And, and they, are, they are very much into the culture that we want to create, which is essentially ensuring that we offer the um, door-to-door services, door-to-door -to -door meaning to say that, you know, um, from the point that they call all the way to when they end and they make their new booking again, we are with them all the way and we know them individually and we even send them birthday presents or birthday cards or, or whatever that, that depending on the, on the tier relationship that we have with them, to make them feel very valued. With staff, we do, um, at one point in time, we've been doing weekly meetings, especially when I first took over mainly because we wanted to discuss some of the issues that we're having, some challenging issues we're having in operations and resolve that. And then over time, we started having less and less meeting. And the only time we had meetings where we were discussing new compensation, new policies that we wanted to do or to introduce product, um, um, product um, incentives. You know, so those are things we would discuss. And we actually have, we would have massive argument, not argument, massive debates in terms of why it would make sense and so forth. And more or less, once everybody is clear, and we're able to address that a lot of time when they hit their KPIs, you know, they actually achieve a very, very, um, very, very good um, uh, returns as well. In fact, some of our consultants actually go out and buy Rolexes because they were making so much from um, over six to eight months with us, you know, because they were able to achieve that, that sort of um, a compensation that was very comfortable for them, even the therapists as well, because they were able to achieve that uh, by applying um, a very consistent approach to customer care. Amazing. Okay, so Anna has a question. Go for it, Anna. Yes. Uh, Hi, Anna. You, Hello, thank you, Suzanne. Um, let me just get to my screen. I'd like to know, please, so I love this idea of your, um, sorry, I'm just trying to find it on my top screen. Oh, I lost it. Hold on a moment. Sorry. Oh, there you go. This uh, yield management. How do you work it when a client phones in and they'd like a promotion, say, for example, the uh, three o'clock promotion slot, but the treatment is for two hours? Because obviously then it overlaps into your peak. It's okay, because what we'll do is we'll take it at the time where they come in. So we'll count it as a the time they come in, because we want to do good, ultimately it's goodwill, right? Okay. So as long as the, the goal is to try and come in at a time where is achieved, then we'll definitely will do goodwill for that time. It's only one, it's only an hour for maybe one client for a day. It's okay, no, no big issue. But if it becomes a pattern where all the clients are coming at that time, then of course we'll make adjustments along the way as well. Okay, thank you very much. Just that quick question. Thank you. You're welcome. That's amazing. Okay, anybody else have any other questions? So who is let's ask and go into the chat box who is currently making use of 
yield management techniques such as dynamic pricing? Who at the moment in their business is already doing this? Will you go into the chat box and let us know? Um, and if you're not, I would love to know who is going to start doing this because I think this is amazing. I have been speaking about this for a long time. Okay, there we go. So Leandra currently does it on the quiet days. Well done. That's Excellent. amazing. Yeah. Good, good. Has it been effective for you, Leander? Has it been very effective for you, Leander? I'm sure she's going to type it. There we go. It's that helped helps a lot. Well. Wonderful. Yeah. It's able to also um, maximize your therapist revenue and commissions as well by not having the, the quiet time. Okay. Oh, that's Dominic. awesome. Yeah, at yeah. least now Dominique has got a new project that she can do, implement it. <laughs> um, right. with, a, with a great spreadsheet like that, that's brilliant. Okay. Mm -hmm. Michelle says, also a very basic version connected to room mm -hmm. sales packaged with treatments in midweek. We also bundle yep. for treatments. Excellent. Danae says, we do bundle packages. Okay, that's great. Wonderful, wonderful. Because I think when you do that, you really offer value to the customers as well. And that's really the key. Once you offer value and you match them well, the chances of them coming back is very high. Because every mm -hmm. dollar that you put up for advertising is very, very high just to bring them in. So it's very important that we find ways to keep them with us. And we find ways, you know, where we're able to use different sort of pricing to be able to attract them and keep them and so that they will stay long term with us. Correct. So it, it handles both customer acquisition and customer retention, which is fantastic. Okay, everyone. So if there is no more questions, please go into the chat box and give Suzanne your best takeaway from today. So what was your absolute best takeaway that you are going to implement and that you really found totally fascinating so that she can get some input on her presentation. Um, thank you so much again for giving up your personal time. I know it's dinner time, so you're going to eat a little bit later today, but we really, really do appreciate all the input that you've given us. And My pleasure. I hope, I hope to, always... to meet you in Singapore because I'm going... Yes. With Anna in November, we're going to go to the Cosmoprof there. So hopefully we'll meet you in person. That'd be wonderful. I think I have a slot for speaking there as well. So I shall definitely look forward to meeting you in Cosmoprof. Yes. Lovely. I'm also yes. speaking. So that yes. will be amazing. I'll definitely see you. Okay. Marisa, for those yes. who are very interested in um, the slides, I'd be more than happy to share. They are, yes. of course, very welcome to email me. Or I can I can uh, send it. I can just put my email here for those who are great. interested. That's wonderful. That's great. Okay, so Leandre is saying she found the consultants um, with the guided journey the most valuable takeaway for her. Anna says she's also looking forward to meeting you because she'll also be in Singapore in November, and she loved, she couldn't choose the best tip. She loved all of them. Liz said <laughs> strategic pricing versus tactical pricing. Yes, Liz, I also found that very, very beneficial. So that was amazing. Any other feedback from anybody else? To Suzanne, Dominique says strategic pricing. Thank you so much. Great. Any more feedback for Suzanne before we say goodbye? Karen, mm. love teaming staff up to share in their commissions, yes, and team up the consultants with the therapists. I also mm. think that's fantastic, okay? Danae loved it all. She says, thank you very much. Oh, thank Beth you. Says <laughs> everything, which is great. Okay, that's amazing. Good, good, good. Liz, thank you so much. Amazing. Michelle, thank you. Teaming up and pricing strategy was her favorite as well. So basically, in a nutshell, I think it was all very valuable information. Even if 
They are implementing specific or little items. Mm -hmm. I think you've opened up our minds into exploring this further, taking it from whatever step we are at currently in our businesses mm -hmm. to the next step. And that is the goal of these coaching sessions that we host twice a month. So thank you for guiding us today, Suzanne. And um, everybody, the recording is available on our YouTube channel. It stays there forever. So it's Spa Professionals Guild. We put the recording there with the topic heading so that you can go in at any time and search for any of the topics that we've covered over the last two and a half years. So make use of that YouTube channel. It's got lots and lots of valuable information. Okay, so thank you so much, Suzanne. And that's it from us. Thank you, Marisa. And thank you, everybody else. I really appreciate your comments. And I'm, I'm hoping that your business also will grow and your revenue will increase over the next few months. Looking forward. Okay. See you in Singapore. See you in Singapore. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.